Astronomers are eagerly awaiting a celestial event that only happens roughly every 80 years. It involves a star system called T Corona Borealis. Our science editor, Rebecca Morell, explains. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have that report, but I'm very pleased to say uh, that we do have astronomer and managing editor of Fifth Star Labs, Jennifer Millard, who can certainly explain uh, more about this story. Jennifer, uh, really good to have you with us. Um, so this is going to be a huge event in history because this explosion, uh, as it is, and I'll get you to explain more about that, has never been photographed before. Uh, so do tell us more. The last time we witnessed this was 80 years ago, almost. And you know, back then, we were in the very infancy of astrophotography, so it hasn't actually been captured properly before, and certainly not with all of the modern developments that we have in astronomy these days, especially across the multi-wavelength spectrum. And so to be able to examine this system at all different wavelengths and have all different pictures and spectra so we can look at chemical compositions and things like that is going to be extraordinary. But we don't know exactly when it's going to go. We are just waiting for this thing to pop. Well, this thing to pop, yes. So tell us more about this thing. What exactly is this phenomenon? Why does it happen? Why does it happen so rarely? So T Corona Borealis is actually two stars. It's not just one. It's two stars that are in a binary system, so they're orbiting each other. One of them is a red giant. So this is the eventual fate of our sun in about five billion years or so. It will puff up into this red giant as it runs out of fuel in its core. And they've got a very sort of tenuously attached outer atmosphere because they're so bloated. They can bloat up to the orbit of Venus, Earth, even Mars or beyond, depends on their size. Then the other star is what we call a white dwarf. And this is the remnant core left over of a star like the sun after it's become a red giant. And the white dwarf is actually stealing that red giant's atmosphere and it's accumulating this material over time. And eventually it gets to a point where there's so much material, the star can't take it anymore. And then there's an explosion on the surface of the star, but it doesn't destroy the star. It's like a regulatory process. And then again, once that explosion has happened, we get this bright flash and this is where the star suddenly becomes visible to us. And then that material will start building up again. And every 80 years, we get this temporary brightness for this star. Now, and exactly Jennifer, why is, we don't know. sorry to interrupt. We've got about 40 seconds, I think, left. But can okay. you just explain for our audience um, what's the best way to try to see this in what sorts of conditions? So at the minute, Northern Hemisphere is the best. You want to look before dawn, about 4 a.m. Look for the plough or the Big Dipper. Use the handle to arc to Arcturus, this bright red star in the east near the horizon, and then just to the left of it. That's where you'll see Corona Borealis, this curling sea constellation. And if it goes, there'll be a new star there. Amazing. Um, good luck to everyone trying to, to spot this. Uh, Jennifer Miller, thank you very much. You're watching BBC News.